Welcome to Let's Paint Minis. I'm Dan and today we're painting something a little bit bigger. We have this Storm Giant. I'm going to follow the process of base coating everything. Then I'm going to do some washes over the textured parts. I'm going to glaze in a shade across the flesh before I do highlights. And we're going to get this as our end result. For base coating, I'm going to go over the entire miniature so I can get an idea of the color tones as that's something I sometimes struggle with. I'm going to leave out some parts to the very end, such as the sword and the lightning, as I know I'll paint those last. And that way it doesn't matter if I get any paint on them earlier on. For the skin, I'm using Bugman's Glow. I'm going to shade down in the shadows with some cooler tones later on, but this is going to be the kind of mid-tone for our flesh. I'll highlight up with Cadian Flesh Tone and maybe get some basic skin tone from Vallejo in there too. I'm using Mournfang Brown over the tunic area making sure to get into all of the recesses and make sure everything is covered evenly. I got some Vallejo scurvy green that I'm using on the skirt. I know that I want the lightning to be nice light shades of blue so I'm going to try and involve some blues and then greens as the additional colors across the miniature. I'm using Rhinox hide in any of the other areas just to be a dark brown and be a kind of background item not something that necessarily catches the eye. I've been trying to use darker colours on the lower part of the miniatures as well to increase the perception of depth. And then I've got Steel Legion Drab that I'm using on any of the other areas that should be brown like the straps and belts and things like that. I've done a couple of thinned down layers and this is the end result that I've been able to get. And at this stage I'm fairly happy with the colour choices that we have. I'm starting to learn to use techniques right for the areas rather than all over the miniature. So I'm using washes to shade but I'm just doing that on the textured areas. So mostly the clothing on this miniature. It should get some nice shadows in the tunic area. I'm happy to let it pull across these shoulder pauldrons or whatever they would be to get some nice shadows amongst the details in there. And again, I want to make sure all the recesses in the kind of tunic that he's wearing uh, is nice and dark inside. That will make the highlighting a bit easier and give us a big contrast. Across the skirt, it's not really going to help us too much, but it should give us some darker lines next to all of these kind of tassel bits that are hanging down. And then I'm adding some black across the boots just to really emphasize the fact that they are a darker area that I don't really want the eyes to focus on, but I do still want a contrast, a difference. Again, I mix my own washes using the inks. I'm still having a lot of fun with those and I highly recommend getting some. But what I've listed on the video would be equivalents of the uh, already mixed washes. So very quickly, layering is the art of going from one color to another and it's a very simple way of blending. Take something like blue and we want to blend up to green. You'll have thinned paints and you'll be adding bits of green bit by bit in small segments so you're slowly mixing up closer to the color that you want to get to. The more layers you do, the smoother the gradient you will end up with and that's where it really pays to take your time and have thinned paints. Using colours that are closer together to begin with will also give you a smoother gradient, such as using flesh tones. And that's my beginner view on layering and a simple method and approach to doing so. Now that I've shown at least my idea of what layering is, it's time to give it a go on the miniature itself. I'm starting here with what looks like it would be the easiest examples. They are these tassels along the skirt. They're basically straight smooth bits of material. So my plan is to get a gradient like we saw in the video going from this blue to a lighter blue by just adding white to the mixture. 
So I'm just concentrating on building up the layers, getting brighter and brighter towards the tips of the material. And I'm doing the same on the skirt. It's a different shape. It's more of a rounded object. So I'm considering the lighting but again, just building up the layers to be brighter. It's not a particularly neat end result, but it was good practice before getting onto the more important parts of the miniature. The end result doesn't look too bad, maybe a little cartoony and a bit messy. But it's hard to tell when it's the first thing that you've highlighted. You really need to get more of the miniature painted up so you can have a basis of comparison and reference. This is the similar colour scheme to what we used when we did the Ratman video and I felt like that ended up being far too warm so I'm going to learn from that and I've added some blue into the flesh tones and then some Rhinox hide to darken and desaturate that slightly and I'm just glazing that into the areas that should be shaded on the flesh. So under the armpits and maybe in some of the recesses of the muscles. It'll be easy to go back over this with some Bugman's Glow, so I'm not too worried about it being in the wrong places. I just want to get some of the layers down and see what it looks like. I do have quite a few layers in the bits that I want to be particularly dark, like under the arms and in the armpits, and I actually quite like the end result that we got. There seems to be a fair amount of depth already, even though we haven't done any highlighting. And with the shadows in place, we can start with the highlighting. This is where I think a lot of the decent miniature painters get a great result and where I struggle to maintain focus. I know it's about being patient and taking your time, but eventually I get to this stage where I just start slapping paint down and that's something I'm trying to work on. So with this miniature, I'm trying to concentrate on making sure I take my time and do it just bit by bit. I'm going over some of the shaded areas with the flesh tone that we already had, just to smooth that out slightly. I've painted here with a zenithal highlight, but looking back I should have painted with the light source coming from the lightning, it would have made the OSL make more sense. That's something I'll try next time I try out OSL. When it came to painting the face, this is a larger scale miniature that I'm used to painting so I really wanted to give painting the face a good go as it's quite difficult on the smaller miniatures. Obviously the highlights tend to focus on the nose, the cheekbones, often the brow but I thought with him wearing this helmet that that would be shaded area. Painting the bottom lip so that we have a mouth and I've used some of that blue flesh mix that we made in underneath the cheeks. I'm afraid I had to paint the eyes off camera as it was very difficult to do with the camera in the way but that's something I can make a video on if people are interested but again I'm not an expert at any of this so there are probably better videos out there for such a difficult thing. Now it's time for some of finishing touches such as the object source lighting that I want to be coming from the lightning. I'm giving this a go by glazing in blue across any area that would be reflecting light as if this lightning was a source of light. I'm happy with how I started. It was very faint effect. The paint was very thin and I was planning on building it up in very slow methodical layers. But looking back on this video now, I can see that I did what I often do and I mentioned before, I seem to give up on taking my time and just start slapping paint down and I feel like the blue is far too strong on parts of the miniature now it gives an amazing effect from certain angles when I'm taking pictures and I was really happy with that but it doesn't look particularly natural from all angles overall I'm fairly happy with the OSL I've been able to get some really cool photos at least for me but there are other angles where the paint looks a bit too strong and very linear. It's all in one position. It doesn't look like it's a natural light source. 
so that's something I'll work on next time, making sure I take my time and make it more of a subtle effect rather than something I concentrate on such a small area on, like a normal highlight. Of course I know other people could do a much better job, but I'm just learning and that's what these videos and me painting miniatures is all about. I'm no expert and I'm not trying to teach any particular techniques, I'm just giving a documentation of how I'm trying them out and you can see how they work for me, a beginner painter, and try them out for yourself. And then this is the final result that we were able to get. As I say, I think the OSL looks really good from certain angles. I'm pretty happy with the flesh colours that we were able to get and this is definitely the best face I've ever painted, the larger scale has certainly helped there. Thank you so much for watching, I'm really trying to make these videos of a decent quality, it's a learning process much like painting miniatures, so any feedback, subscriptions, likes, comments etc that I get really mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you on another video. Bye!